Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest on the show today. We have two gentlemen here. We have Sam, who is the President Chief Science Officer of BioOx, and we have John Benz, and he is the Chief Operating Officer of BioOx. And the two of them have created together, they have a wonderful company that helps people um, heal their bodies, uh, improve the, improve their overall health. And they've created some wonderful products that are just amazing, very unique, and offer lots of different benefits. So I'm going to give the stage to, we'll start with John. And John, can you tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do? Um, yeah. Um, thanks for having us. Uh, I know our last uh, episode, it was great. And so, yeah, I mean, everything that I do, a uh, little more logistical aspect, but, you know, personally been using the, our, our BioOx reactors for um, about six years now, personally, in some other businesses that I own. And that's kind of how Sam and I met and uh, form a, formed a working relation. And uh, here we are six years later and, and doing some great things. Um, you know, so we have a family of products. We're a biotechnology company. It's a little different than the field that I traditionally came from in some different career paths. Um, so it's it's been a, a great learning thing. And you know, we're we're doing good stuff for um just people and our planet in general. Um, so you know, with biotechnology, you know, that screams a lot of things for people. Uh, but we do have a family of products from our air cleaning systems to um, our bio-oxygen um, enzyme water to um, our different enzyme solutions that are for agricultural growth, um, that is ones that go on our air cleaner and, and a few other things. So, um, and mainly we're talking about our bioreactor today, um, mm -hmm. which are used in a variety of um, industries. Um, some of the three main ones that were in aquatics. Um, so in, in, in our natatoriums, um, our pet industry, is very big in that. Um, and we'll dive more into detail there as well as equine, um, but also then in-home use for people uh, and, and a variety of other things. I mean, the list can go on. I mean, we're really applicable in, in any part of any air cleaning that, that needs to be done. And Sam, can you tell us a little about yourself and, and tell us a little about, you know, about bioreactor and, and, and how it how it helps to, um, you know, uh, clean the air and, and, and kill the contaminants in, in our um, environment and the benefits it has on people? Well, sure. Um, I'm a chemical engineer. I have a doctorate in chemical engineering and I worked, uh, I applied the chemical engineering knowledge to human health like designing uh, enzyme systems to help the liver and uh, working with uh, blood cells and working with natural microorganisms. So I also was a research chair professor of biotechnology here in New Jersey. So we, we discovered how oxygen uh, goes into water and our bodies are made of water. So uh, how does oxygen go into water? Because oxygen doesn't dissolve in water. So we learned how natural uh, things like humans and plants and microorganisms take this oxygen and pack it into a reserve of oxygen, which we all have. We all have a reserve of oxygen. Yes. And uh, we learned very quickly that, that uh, the more air pollution you breathe, the more stress you have, uh, the, the more exhausted you become, uh, the more uh, your oxygen reserves go down. And when they go down, then you can catch any disease. And yeah. you can start, your body can start just weakening overall. You can even catch cancer. Uh, so we worked on trying to improve people's reserves of oxygen. So we were able to create uh, a beverage that has this. We, we were able to create a special beverage for dogs that with terminal cancer with, with uh, a good results. This encourages us a lot, and now we do have a beverage for uh, humans everywhere. People actually also feed it to their pets. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as the bioreactors are concerned, they basically work on the same principle, that is, of uh, helping you keep your oxygen reserves up. So the bioreactors have water inside, and there's permanent waterfall there. The waterfall captures both 
both uh, big particles, which mm -hmm. everybody knows go, go with uh, fans and everything. It also captures aerosols. Now, aerosols is how viruses float in the air. And mm -hmm. if you try to suck the viruses out, they won't go because it's an electrical phenomenon. So with ours, we not only capture the viruses, but we also destroy them. Mm -hmm. So that, uh, also uh, our, our bioreactors uh, capture and destroy like nail salon solvents and formaldehyde <laughs> and gasoline. These are very, very small particles. In terms of microns, they're 0 0.0001, that's four zeros, uh, one a micron, whereas the, the best that HEPA filter can do is three tenths of a micron. And the ionics and the UV, uh, the UV is too dangerous to use for people. And I think it can make things worse by breaking open these particles. Yeah. So this is the only air purifier that's natural. It, we, the enzymes we use are taken from the planet. That's how the planet cleans itself. So with our units, with our bioreactors, uh, uh, we're just mimicking what the planet does, you know, how lakes clean themselves, how waterfalls clean themselves. We're bringing that into the home or into the hospital and so that sort of thing. Actually, we are in many hosp hospitals. We are actually in many locations like uh, uh, NYU. We're in NYU, we're at Emory University uh, uh, and others. Uh, the main thing regarding the medical area is we're in, uh, we, we do medical research. For instance, the mice, they have a bedding and the bedding contaminates the mice, you know, so the, the research yeah. results can go bad. So with our machines, it, it helps clean that up and get better research results. And uh, we've been in the gross anatomy lab for a very long time. These are were actually uh, dead bodies which are dealt with great respect are being taught uh, to medical schools uh, for anatomy, for the study of anatomy. And th those odors are really, really bad. And we capture and destroy them too like bone particles from when they saw a skull. I don't want to get too gross on that. But we are also uh, uh, in a surgery lab. We're in, we've been in a dental teaching surgery lab for over 10 years. And uh, um, actually, uh, that dental clinic was open throughout COVID, and not one of the staff got sick. Wow. Now, the, the bioreactor, this, this is something that a person could actually have in their home, and it could actually, over time, probably help improve someone's overall health because it's protecting them from a lot of different diseases and viruses and contaminants that we, ha you know, we have in our homes. People don't realize that even when you first step out of your home, you're immediately, there's contaminants all around you that you're, you're inhaling and you're breathing and, and that are getting ingested into your bodies. And inside the home, you're filtering that, those contaminants throughout the house within your air conditions and your, in your filterization system and so forth. So really you're, you're never fully protected protected. But when you have something like the bioreactor, like how does, you know, for people who are not familiar with it or don't have a scientific background, what's the easy way to explain to them how vital and how important and the benefits it carries that if someone has this product in their home, how it could actually improve their overall health and protect them from viruses and diseases and, and so forth around them? Yep. Uh, it's a good question. Um, I'll, let me take this one, Sam. So, um, can I share my screen? Is that all right? Oh, sure. Go ahead. Sure. So I'm going to just share graphic cause this helps a lot of people. Um, got this one pulled up and there it goes. So, you know, what Sam mentioned too, is that micron particle rating and, you know, the tradition, everybody hears HEPA, HEPA, HEPA. Um, but HEPA can only capture 0.3 microns and larger. Um, so there, everything besides us is using airflow to do um, that job and push those particles around and eventually maybe get through that HVAC system um, and that sort of thing and then get stuck in that filter. Downfall there too is a particle size as well as it's not going to actually kill anything. So eventually it might be dislodged free, et cetera, or it's even a hazard to um, people when they do go to clean those and they do need to be changed. Um, HEPA filters, uh, unfortunately, maintenance and things like that is uh, forgotten about a lot. Uh, and then also ending up in the landfill. Um, yeah. So 
you know, we, our units um, are self-contained and we don't have changeable filters. We do have replenishment of enzymes, but when they are, um, when the units are cleaned out and emptied and disposed, that sort of thing, um, they're all natural. So they can, you know, go down the drain, they can get dumped on the ground outside and then everything is all safe and inert um, wow. where, because we're actually destroying those things, you know, moving to ionic and UV and other things, we can get down to 0.1 micron. Again, this scale is showing us, this is us beyond everybody else getting to that 0 0.0001 micron. It's a wow. huge difference. And, you know, in a scrubber class, we're not just an air purifier. Um, we, as a scrubber, we're actually helping lift off surfaces as well. So that's the difference to do between your scrubber and your um, air purifier filters. Um, so there's a lot of other things going on there. And then that explanation for a lot of people is, okay, seeing how farther we're going than everybody else, a lot of those viruses um, and other things are so much smaller than traditional um, air purifiers can get. Um, that's where we come into play and are more effective. Um, so we're using convection and molecular charge detraction and then biooxidation to actually break down those particles. So like Sam said, we're not only just capturing, they're also destroying. So um, mm. those enzymes are going to work. Um, we have a formula for that um, and they're breaking everything down. They always win the war, that sort of thing. And then it's all natural. It comes from the earth. Um, you know, that's the part of the biotech aspect where, uh, that Sam mentioned too, is, is we're using the earth's natural process to a clean our air and really heal ourselves uh, with our other variety of products and things too, um, without then being another burden on top of it, more landfill waste, et cetera. Um, so we're imp improving our, our air, our water, our soil, um, and that sort of thing. You got to think of, um, I always think swamps in general, I mean, people are like, oh, gross, it's a swamp. But I mean, that's a natural filter necessarily for our, our planet. Um, right. The waterfall that Sam talked about, that's that natural attractant aspect. Um, and then that convection and, and how our fans flow through and bring um, an instant expulsion of clean air where um, UV, for an example, has a dwell time. If uh, UV can be fairly um, adequate against bacterial, a little less effective when you look at statistics for viruses. Um, mm -hmm. For us, it doesn't matter. It's all about particle size. We don't care about the, what particle it is, if it's H1N1, H2N2, um, and a variety of other things. We're bringing that in particle size and, and we're going to work in destroying that. Uh, where you're, and it's, and it's once it's captured, it's instant clean air. There's no dwell time. So that UV dwell time, that particle passes by that UV. A, first of all, ha most UVs are now closed systems because UVs have exposure aspects that are, are hazardous. Um, there used to be old systems that UV, turn on a UV light, everybody leave the room, that sort of stuff um, mm -hmm. as a hazard. We don't have any hazards. Um, so it's all safe and effective there. And then kind of back to that dwell time is that particle passes by if it has enough surface area on it to get there first because of the airflow um, mm -hmm. and then it has to sit under that uv light for a, a certain period of time to actually render that particle um, dead inert neutral etc whatever phrase you want to use um, where we don't have that dwell time um, so again it's using that airflow we're not using that if you think of us like a giant magnet to the molecular level of the particle we're bringing mm -hmm. that into our unit we're not using airflow um, I know some people don't necessarily wrap their head around like, well, we need to have how many cubic feet of, of air moved per minute. Yeah. Um, we're not looking at that rating to capture that particle um, and, and bringing it in. And then we're naturally destroying it. Our enzyme solution helps amplify that waterfall effect um, so we can get the zone targeted for um, the different sizes of reactors that we have. Um, so that's, you know, in a, in a, short but long kind of a way on what's happening that's different than other technology comparative to what we're doing um, and how we're doing it. And again, using Earth's natural resources to do that for us. That's amazing. Sam, would you like to make any comments about that? Uh, no, uh, John's got it covered. Um, uh, I wanted to say that uh, a lot of people who like us are 
uh, dog boarding facilities because uh, they were worried about a, they don't like the word uh, kennel cough, but they were, and, and, uh, most of these viruses are non-identified. They don't know what the virus is, except all the dogs are coughing. And so um, uh, our technology prevents that. It captures uh, the aerosols that carry all these viruses. And so it prevents the spread of the disease. Uh, I find over time that and and I we learned a lot I think people in general from COVID and and it still I guess to me perplexes myself on what people truly care about as far as air quality. Uh, I know when we were talking before this that you know there's, we see more and more air quality hazard uh, alerts come out um, yeah. more and more every year it seems like and. Um, which is obviously a problem and, and we can help with that centralized zone and clean your air in your home and get out of that. Cause it's still coming into your home through your HVAC, et cetera. Um, and getting yeah. that nice treatment to a be healthier. Um, but it, it still seems to me that when it comes to your own air as a person, we may not care as much right away, but once it starts affecting animals and other things that we, you know, love in, in other aspects, um, it gets a lot of more people's attention. And when, you know, Sam stated, it's the pet boarding aspect. And, and that's where a lot of my background is. I do own a pet boarding facility. Um, and that's one of the reasons on how Sam and I have met and started working on things and, and understanding how it's going. And like you said, there's a lot of things for people that can be known and identified when it comes to a lot of animal things, especially in, in canines, there's only a handful of respiratory diseases that are known and can be identified. But when you talk to a, a lot of veterinarians, they're like, oh, there's 150 plus more things that we have no clue what they are, how to identify them, and you yeah. can't explain them and they just happen. So um, that has been one of our bigger industries as far as our, our bioreactor and um, pretty much all of our clients that have now inputted them into their facilities have stated, look, I do not deal with respiratory outbreaks anymore, yeah. uh, wow. which is a huge thing in, in that industry because, you know, A, being an owner, it, it's uh, I want to pull out my hair or <laughs> it grays faster, that sort of thing where we do everything we can to have the safest and cleanest environment uh, for those animals when we're caring for them that, uh, you know, as time goes by, we know we'll never 100% be able to eliminate everything, but man, if we can get really close, um, we've done a really good job and not having that spread. And it doesn't grow in that facility. It's just like, it came from somewhere, whether it was an environmental thing, you know, all the dogs, they live in different areas, et cetera they're boarded something's there and now okay we have to get rid of it uh well now we're actually getting rid of it so maybe only that one dog has that cough it got isolated our air cleaners and their surface cleaning aspects are um doing the job that they should do extremely well and now you don't have a spread and instead of having 80 percent of the population have a cough that was there now it was yeah. just done and, and that's the big thing and i think if we take that as people and learn from that animal industry like they do testing on mice and things like that for a variety of things this is really applicable in the other sense too of hey why are these other air cleaners not working or they have already have them and we've had customers that um have had the other traditional um air cleaning aspects and they still are having those problems and it's a it's that micron size, that particle size, that is really the defining factor. And then yeah. once they're so small, they can't move with the airflow. That's where we're coming in and, and really doing the, the full proper cleaning job. Um, so that's that's been the biggest feedback um, as far as our customers. I mean, that's our main focus. You know, They say, well, we need to capture this, this, and this. And, and we basically say, look, we are non-discriminatory in what we capture. We're going to get it all for you down to that 0 0.0001 micron um, and, and, and keep going from there. We don't have a filter that fills up. Um, we're always at peak performance. Um, things like carbon filters, carbon filters fill up and then yeah. they end up stuff out the other side. Mm -hmm. 
we we don't have that aspect so um you know maintenance is fairly simple on our unit it's different um but again better for the environment actually doing a better job and getting those particles eliminating a lot of disease spread period yeah now when you have a bioreactor like um like when you, when you have an air scrubber like that um how many feet or how how many do you need let's say if you lived in a house a residential house because like a lot of times if you see like air purifiers for example you see them sell air purifiers they'll have different sizes and they'll say well this size is good for x amount of feet and then this one is good for a room that's this big and so forth now if you have the bio you know, uh, reactor you know how many should you have in a home or did you do you just need one or you know how does that work yeah, so because we do have different size reactors, uh, we have a few models that we really mainly um, talk about. It's our model 85, our model 300, and our model 650. Um, and most people in homes have the 85 models. They're a smaller unit. Um, it holds 10 gallons of water within that waterfall system. Um, and um, usually most places will have one or two, maybe three of those. Um, and it just really depends on what they want to um, uh, conquer in their home. You know, the yeah. one thing about our technologies were dome zone influenced. So um, where instead of going through the HVAC and being able to move all the air around, again, we're not replacing HVAC. So it's a spot treat. Most people treat their their open areas, their family rooms, their kitchen, living rooms, a lot of that's open now in today's housing. Um, and then maybe a bedroom or something. They're not, they're not covering non-frequented areas, those sorts of things or small areas like that. So typically it's one to two of those units. Um, our units were originally designed more uh, industrial wise. Mm -hmm. So when we get to the 300 and 650, um, a lot of times they're just too big for uh, most homes, um, right. we, we talk a lot too, because of how they were developed originally, um, they don't have that sexy curb appeal like a lot of machines do, but we also know that uh, that doesn't always get the job done. And we look at simplistic design, um, it, they're made out of HDPE, so um, high, high density polyethylene, they, they're we have units out that are out there that are 15 years old and they just keep on kicking. Yeah. Um, wow. If, so it's, that's the, the big thing that those plastics, they can't mold, they can't rust those types of things. Um, and so, you know, not having that curb appeal when you get to that bigger unit, um, it's not necessarily the greatest thing for home, but the smaller unit does great for that. Um, it, it's usually not noticeable. It's getting the job done where others have failed. Um, mm -hmm. that's footage that that 85 model. Now, all of our stats are based on a very high contaminant level. So yeah. how they work is they create their own dome of influence as, uh, they're turned on and it slowly keeps getting larger and larger. Eventually it'll hit its peak, um, zone of is, is max capacity. And in homes, we've been noticing up to 900 square foot coverage. Um, when a high contaminant area, those are rated at 600 square feet, but homes typically aren't a high contaminant area like boarding facilities or aquatic centers or just in any industrial application that we've uh, been to. Um, so it's because it's easier to keep that bigger area clean, it's reaching yeah. that. Home. And, you know, a lot of rooms aren't usually that much more than that 900 square feet so they're, they're they're covering a lot of their home with that one or two unit yeah now i i have to say you know like a lot of times like i have purifiers throughout the house but they're it's nothing like the ones you're describing like many of the, the, the ones that i have are supposed to be high rated but you know the filters don't even last as long as they promise and then like you mentioned you see the dirt coming out of the air purifier you know, because it, it's collected so much contaminants and, and, and yours, you know, 
captures much more than than these regular uh, purifiers that you could purchase, you know, online, you know, maybe you, um, I know we have talked about it, but maybe you can go over again for people just so they understand that this is your your the bioreactor is nothing like the the air purifiers that you buy in the store online, they are they are capturing a lot more and do and they are, they can actually, you know, um, purify homes to the point where you actually could start to heal and get rid of some of the illnesses you have because it's it's actually disposing it throughout your, your technology that you devised making making this product yeah it's it, it is it, it's different and once most people understand that the technology is different and how it works um most people are like, well, that's a no-brainer. Um, yeah. We have a, an example of a customer of ours that has four dogs in their house. Um, and but he, So he's married, has some kids, they have four dogs. And they've had some other air cleaners and things, and they they got one of the R85 reactors and put basically in their living room. And their living room and kitchen area is kind of open, they said. And um, his mom is very, very allergic to, to dogs and, and most pets, he said. And so she's never visited their house because he has four dogs. Um, they always meet somewhere else. And he had the reactor in there for about a month and a half. And he was obviously noticing a large difference as well. And he, he finally had his, his mother over and, and she was able to stay in the house for several hours and not have an issue. Um, so it was that big of an impact for that person with those higher allergies. Um, and that is some of our other clients too, where there's a lot of people out there that have so many allergies to so many things and just dust in particular. And they, yeah. in those extreme cases where they've tried everything under the sun. Um, and then yet they, they finally, you know, fall their way to us. And they're like, this is the only thing that's worked. And he's like, I, I got my life back kind of a thing. I, yeah. I can be comfortable in my own home again and not have to try to take a bunch of, um, uh, over the counter meds or uh, prescribed medicine or whatever. Um, and, and to just do that naturally, it's a, it's a huge thing for them. Yeah. Do you have any comment, Sam? Um, yeah, I wanted to mention a couple of things, uh, for horses, uh, um, Bodie Miller uh, called me and wanted to see how these would work for horses, for horse athletes. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we did a study on that and we learned that if you scrub their hair for 30 days and you measure their blood, you'll find that their oxygen reserves are really, really improved. And wow. the, we all, our bodies make these oxygen reserves and uh, the ability of the horses to make the oxygen reserves has really, really improved. So uh, because horses were not designed to excuse the terminology, to pee where they sleep. Right. And so the ammonia that they're trying to get rid of in their urine comes back at them. And so they're rebreathing their own toxins. And uh, this is also, I mentioned this about the mice. Yes. So going one step further, you know, uh, in our homes, we have diapers, we have older, older clothes. And as, as we get older and the homes get older, we have odors and, uh, uh, these odors, when they get destroyed, it, it makes the home feel better. Yes. Uh, and another example is forest fires. We had some recent forest fires coming in from Canada down to the yes. New York area. And the people with our air scrubbers, our bioreactors, uh, said that inside the home is pristine, is that there isn't any hint of a forest fire. So those were the things I wanted to mention. And I take you back on the the smoke aspect too of the forest fires. So, um, I live in northern Minnesota, and so every year we seem to get the Canadian wildfire um, smoke, depending on which way that wind all of a sudden hits. And it, it, growing up, I I didn't we didn't really have it a lot, but it, it's a lot more now. And yeah. so it seems just it's an every year thing. It's like okay, we're gonna have a week of forest fire smoke, and and it gets difficult to breathe outside. And so, like I said, my background in the pet boarding industry, as far as owning a, um, a dog kennel, um, and as well as an equine center. So Bodie Miller was 
I, we have a video with Bodie Miller and like Sam was touching on and, and the differences. And I shared a little bit of graphic there while Sam was talking about that. Um, and that's, that's kind of how I got started. I was a customer first and, and it was a huge difference for us as far as we had a horse with heaves, which is basically like asthma. And yeah. we, we always had to help control it with a steroid. And, you know, we didn't want long-term steroid effects from that. So uh, when we put in uh, a 650 model uh, reactor in our barn that it, it, in, a, in a couple of months, we were able to take them off of that steroid. So that was huge uh -huh. for us. And, you know, the expanding in a couple of years went by and then we had our first big time smoke of the Canadian wildfires come through since we had that unit. And we have big overhead bay doors in our barn and they were up and the kind of the smoke came in and and you'd cross that threshold of that dome of influence and in our barn it was still pristine air so we were able to even keep the horses in so they didn't have to be outside in the pastures uh, breathing in all of the stuff um, and we could keep them in a safe area as well because the those air cleaners were um, you know being that effective um, so I've personally seen that on it you know some of it's like hey this came up it's not you know, we know we can capture that, but that magnitude um, that I've even personally seen, it's like, holy wow, um, you know, it's still um, certain things that over, over six years now, it's like next year, it's like, wow, I, that's still, uh, it's very en en enriched to see it and, and seeing the magnitude of what's actually happening there. Wow. It is, that, that is amazing, you know, and, and, you know, I, I could have, I could only imagine what this can do to the environment. Like, you know, if you, if people consistently use products like this throughout their homes and, and, and in their, in their companies, the, the quality of the environment would, would I, I would think would change tr dramatically and the people, their overall health and well being would probably change as well. What are your thoughts on that? Definitely. Um, uh, our bodies have to use up oxygen to get rid of smoke particles, especially the very fine smoke particles. And uh, those same smoke particles, by the way, do land on snow in the North Pole, and the sun does see them, and they cause the poles to melt faster. Uh, but so what happens with our lungs, though, we have to wash the air, and we use up our oxygen doing that. With our bioreactors, because of the waterfall, it washes the air for us. So our oxygen reserves go up. It helps our health immediately because of that. And then of course, when we breathe in like formaldehyde that's in smoke fire and carbon monoxide, uh, uh, our, our bioreactors destroy both of those gases. And uh, so the liver, our liver doesn't have to work to get rid of them. So by helping our lungs and our liver, it makes us healthier just by increasing the reserves of oxygen. So that if we go out, it'll protect us some more. Uh, this has happened with two children I know that couldn't go to school. Um, uh, they were so allergic to the smoke and everything in, in their apartments or their houses. And uh, by installing some of these bioreactors in their home, so during that period where they were at home and they were sleeping, it gave them enough strength to get out and go to school on their own. Uh, wow. One kid was around... 10 or 11, and the other one was a 13-year-old girl. Uh, she uh, uh, was very happy to be able to do that. It seems like, too, that a lot of, a lot of the, thing, uh, the illnesses that people have is because a lot of these contaminants can really, it seems like, really destroy your immune system. And when it destroys your immune system, it kind of opens you up to all these different diseases and viruses and, and, and even plays a, a, a big role on how well your body can fight them and how well your different organs can actually work to, you know, together as a team because they're, they're so probably so sluggish and, and slow you know, work in and, and uh, stressed that they can't really function to their full capacity and it, and it's help and, and it's, it's disturbing the entire body, which is causing, you know, unnecessary diseases and, and different illnesses to come about. And, and even, you know, chronic fatigue, which is a big factor. People always can complain. It's a, it could be a symptom of many diseases and viruses, but it also can be something that could be avoided. It seems if we could take those contaminants out of the home and out of the areas that were, you know, most, you know, at, at on an ongoing basis. 
Um, actually, uh, we've done a few clinical studies. Uh, John shows what happened with, uh, with the horses. That was a blinded study, so uh, it's quite a, a valid, they're all valid studies like this. But we did one with Rutgers University and Pain Center for Pain. And we learned that the people who are in deep, deep pain have less 78 milligrams per liter of blood. They have less of these oxygen reserves in their blood. So that means that even though most people use a pulse oxidation, you know those pulse ox, mm -hmm. when they put that on your finger and yes. they say, oh, you're 95% to 100%, you're good. Well, all mm -hmm. these patients with deep pain were good, but when we analyzed their blood for the reserves, they were not good. And we knew wow. by how much. So in the area of pain, we learned that, you know, and uh, also with the area of hepatitis C, which is a viral disease, and yeah. it causes inflammation, it was the same story again. Their uh, pulse oxidation, uh, pulse oximetry readings were good. They were all good to go. But in reality, they had hep C. And we could measure their inflammation by measuring their reserves of oxygen. So the current method by which everybody says, oh, you're good to go, you're healthy, is not really adequate. For instance, in COVID, what they learned was if, the, if their uh, pulse ox readings were low, then they put them on a respirator. Well, that wasn't the problem. Their pulse ox readings were low because the immune system was grabbing all the oxygen it could get and use it against the virus. That's why it was low. They didn't need this mechanical stuff, you know, bursting their lungs, which we learned about later. But uh, so the, the, the single most important thing they use to measure your blood oxygen, which is the pulse oximetry, pulse ox, uh, uh, is not adequate. It's necessary, right? But it's not not enough. And and to touch on what Sam's talking about there too is is we have and through all of Sam's discoveries with, um, you know, many years ago and 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 that is how we, you know, when I brought up the horse graphic too and the the before and after and the reactors are are adding that so you know we're in that cleaner, healthier environment so our body can adjust to that and and be healthier and have more of those oxygen reserves etc um and that we're able to analyze that based on an analyzer um a, a device uh, uh, uh instrument i should say that sam has obviously created as well so we can actually measure that and we're seeing all of that data firsthand um so there's how we're getting that and when you compare those studies to each other okay we can see that this is less and then even taking and then comparing it to the horse study and it's like, now we can see the before and after just based on using the reactor and not some of our other products. Um, they're all complementing each other. Um, yeah. And the, the data just, you know, is easier to digest and improve over and over again. Um, so like Bodie Miller, um, most people are familiar with him. Um, you know, he was a, a, a big part of, you know, understanding more of that data for us and, in his uh, equine facility. Um, we also um, sponsor uh, Cian O'Connor, which is a, a Irish um, Olympic show jumper. Um, and, you know, they're keeping their animals at their most peak performance. Um, and it's been a huge boost to them uh, when they travel a lot. It, they're dealing with a lot of, uh, when he goes from country to country, they all have different air quality issues. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, that that could bold the difference between first place and seventh place or um, even having to bow out at times because, hey, they're going to take the horse's health first um, besides pushing that. So, you know, that's a huge thing to to be on top of that and, and keep, you know, we're still learning more and more of that. Um, and it's great to see. But, you know, we're noticing not only the technical um, data that's coming out of that based on what Sam's. Uh, discovered and and you know devoted a lot of his, his life's work to but we're, we're seeing a lot of the anecdotal aspects to it too uh, firsthand uh, i wanted to add this uh kian actually flies these bioreactors where he goes <laughs> so they do. he sticks them on an airplane uh, some oh, of them yeah. are large, and yeah. uh, puts them right next to the horse and i know there's something about the horses because people told me that, oh, if you put these things there, the horses will kick them and break them and everything. But I noticed that the horses actually nuzzle them because they know they can they know that there's clean air coming out of there. 
Yeah. And so one of the things that happened was, was uh, uh, when they nuzzle them, some oats fall into the bioreactor. And because it's always oxy oxygenated, that means it's always fresh water, oats would start wanting to grow in there. Yeah. So, you know, that's an, another story. But, but yeah. uh, uh, so the, the, the liquid contents of this bioreactor are always clean. They're clean enough for, you know, plants to grow in and fish wow. to live in, actually. How long do they last usually? If, if someone purchases one, how long do they usually last? The reactor itself, like, mm -hmm. so, so the base is, so like I said, we have units out there that are 15 years old in, in certain aspects and, um, or almost 15, I should say, but uh, they're, they're, they're designed to literally last forever, uh, made out of what they're made of. So everything's made in the USA um, and they're, they're made to last. It's not like, okay, every other year it broke, uh, a pump failed, uh, a fan failed some odd sensor broke and went out and it's like, well, I can't replace it. I got to throw the whole thing away, which again, ends up in the landfill and I got to go get another one. Um, basically with us, the simplistic design, the core unit itself is, is designed to last forever. So we have less waste. Um, and then there's a pump and a fan in there. There's very, there's very little technology. So they're easily replaceable. Um, so personally, I have nine different units uh, between my businesses and our home. And in six years, I've replaced two pumps and one fan. Um, wow. It's kind of died. I mean, and, and those are the electrical things that they could vary, but they're easily replaceable. Hey, this yeah. died. I got a, a, a fan replacement. It, it, it took me about eight minutes to replace and we were back in business and I don't have to spend a lot of money on a whole unit again. And then, then the addition is, so that's the core unit itself. The only thing that needs to be added once a month is our enzyme solution to replenish those enzymes. You know, as they're working and doing their job, they're, you know, going to run out of energy and deplete themselves. Um, so once a month is typically added for enzymes. And then you mm -hmm. add water as needed because they do use water um, in the whole process. Um, so you add water as needed and enzymes once a month. That's really your only continual cost, just like wow. buying a filter. But again, we're not ending up in landfills, et cetera, uh, exactly. neutral and, and, and biodegradable necessarily. I was just curious, um, for people who had COVID after COVID, a lot of them complained of different types of symptoms like fogginess, clarity, some felt off balance. And um, you, ha have you ever um, tried to use any of the BioOx reactor or any of the products to see if uh, any of these type of symptoms for after post COVID um, have, have, have you no noticed any improvements if you did do any studies or you haven't done any studies yet? Well, for um, to us, it doesn't make any difference if it's COVID or another respiratory disease. Because okay. we capture them and we do destroy them. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, one thing we've noticed is it doesn't spread. You know, like uh, we were in a dental surgery that was open during COVID and none of the staff got sick at all during the whole time there. So in terms of prevention of, of that disease, uh, we have information about that from feedback from our customers. But uh, and actually in terms of raising uh, we do have data on the on the horses that it does raise their oxygen reserves measurably, and it also raises their body's ability to make new oxygen reserves. That's very, very important because in the body, white blood cells actually take this oxygen from the red blood cells and they just pack it into little bullets. That's how oxygen travels in the body. So we know how to measure that. And so because it does those two, um, we think it really reduces the after effects of COVID. For sure, we know about our drink, our bio-oxygen beverage, that it, mm -hmm. it does prevent uh, morning fog, brain fog. Uh, that's been reported by, by many of our uh, users. And uh, for me personally, it helps me uh, stay more alert. It helps me when I play tennis and uh, do yoga and other things like that with exercise. Mm -hmm. So I think overall it would help with the uh, long-term COVID problem. Because basically, what it does is allows your own your own it's it's your own immune system, yes, that's solving the problem. You know, so yes. your immune system needs ammunition, 
And yeah. ammunition is these oxygen reserves. These are like tiny bullets of oxygen that your own body makes, and that's how it uses them. So if right. your immune system is has plenty of bullets, then it can fight all the long-term effects. Uh, if it doesn't, then the worst thing happens is that the immune system itself starts getting weaker and weaker, and not just the, not not just your body, but your immune system itself. And so that just leads to a real downhill struggle. Right, 100%, 100%. Now, if we had to take today's conversation and you want to emphasize on some strong key points about the bioreactor, what are some of the things that you'd like to emphasize to the listeners and, and want them to understand maybe some, some benefits or you know some of the successes you had, anything that you think would be beneficial for our listeners today? John, you can... Take this, if you would like. Um, you know, some of the biggest benefit is, is I think some people are on a like, well, I've tried everything. Um, and, or they're um, tired of the, the only options that seem to be out there in the main focus of thing, whether that's uh, some sort of a prescription medication or whatever. Um, and, and I never get into any of the differences or, you know, everybody has opinions about things, but, um, there are some big aspects that I think, um, are key in our technology is we're using things that are natural, that the planet uses, you know, uh, animals, humans, we've all been around for a very, very, very long time. Um, and before we really got into, a lot of different medicines and stuff. It was all natural and we've survived this long off of that. And our air cleaners give that aspect that um, current standard technology is not necessarily um, getting to those smaller problems that affect us in a great way. And the same thing with the other list of our products um, with our, our beverage, um, as well as um, something we haven't talked about yet, which is um, called BioWox Grow. Uh, for agricultural growth um, and, and that. So I'm, I'm sure we'll talk a little bit about that next time as well. Um, but, you know, seeking what we've been using for, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years and, and surviving as a, as a species and, and other animals as well, um, I think bodes to a lot of what we are doing. Um, and, and and we maybe in a sense need to get back to that. And I feel a lot of our clients have stated kind of the same. They're like, hey, I like how we're not doing any more pollution for our planet and we get the cleaner air and I get the better health benefit. Um, it, it's a win-win all the way around and not just for us in general. It's, it's a win for everybody. Yes, definitely, definitely, 100%. Now, where can people find your product? Um, so everything currently is direct. Um, uh, eventually we're, we have some, well, in the agricultural aspect, we have a distributor for that. Um, uh, but in a small sense, you can always get that direct to our, our agricultural distributor is more for a large quantity going straight to farms, you know, mass things like that. But, um, everything is available on biowox.us. So that's B I O O X.us. Um, there is a store shop page. Um, that 85 reactor, as well as our um, agricultural grow enzyme and our beverage are on there. And uh, the very simple click order, calculate shipping, all that sort of stuff. Um, the If there are any questions, um, usually you get, we have a small team, but uh, you get a hold of some of us and, and we guide you on what you need. If there's any type of thing on the reactors, square footage wise, any other questions, a lot of that is available. Technical specifications is on our website as well. Um, our website is very vast. There's a lot of information on there. We always say never never be, never be afraid to reach out. Um, we're very personable on customer service. That's a huge key for us um, because there, you know, there is a lot of educational aspects to some of our technology because it's um, it, it's just not HEPA, 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 and that sort of thing for the air cleaning wise uh, that everybody knows about because it's been around uh, that their grandfather always talked about forever. <laughs> so it's it, it's kind of one of those things. So we're we're always uh, look forward to that conversation if there are questions on it. But easily available bioox.us. Um, if you're looking at larger reactor sizes than the 85, 
um, then those do typically require an email or phone call because those do ship by freight. Um, they're just a little too large for UPS to handle. Wow. Yeah, I think I think this is a great product. Um, I've been using your your water, and I see a difference. In, I see a difference personally in my own health. You know, and I haven't I haven't tried the uh, the pro uh, biox uh, um, reactor yet, but I, I I could definitely be you know highly recommend your water because it, you know I've seen a, a a definite improvement in my health since I've been using it, but. Um, I think what you guys are doing are great. I think, you know, you guys are, are really, uh, you know, helping society. I think our, we, we see so many things in society when it comes to people's health, you know, even animals too. Um, the, the, the health of, of individuals in our society are declining and you see more diseases and you see more cancer and you see, you know, more, more things coming out and, you know, the environment is, is getting worse and we need to, we need to do whatever we can to improve our bodies to improve our overall health and to improve the environment you know it's very important that we improve the environment and if you could you could just even look at global warming you can look at see how the the our environment is reacting to all the different changes and abuses that we we don't realize that we actually put on this you know in the in this uh that we put on in in our world and and the and the reaction that's happened you know it's it's hurting the environment it's hurting people it's hurting animals and you know and I'm glad that, you know, Sam and you and your company and the people who work for you are working together as a team to to help people, to help people's health, to help the environment. And you're doing a great job. And I, I'd like to thank both of you for, for your time coming on the show, for all your efforts that you've been making to make this world a better place and to help the people in it. So thank you very much. And I, I really look forward to talking to you guys again. I want you to know that Sam has his own uh, podcast. His team, his team members like John come on the show and Lisa comes on the show and they talk about different topics and different ways to improve your health. They talk about the products they have that can actually make a big difference in your life. So please listen to their, their um, podcast. Come on to the advisor where you could also listen to their podcast. And they also have a video on YouTube where they share the, the discussions that you've seen today. And, you know, thank you very much. I really do appreciate your time and everything that you do for society and, and for the people who live in this world. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you as well. It's uh, great to speak with you and, and be on your platform, I guess. And I know you reach a lot of people and that uh, we're very thankful for that. Thank you. Thank you. And both of you have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.